Okay, moving back to the key tools that I'd like to point out for now. Um, if we start the top right hand corner, I have this kind of J shaped or backwards L shaped area selected here. These are selection tools and in general, selection tools are very useful. There are so many of them though, we'll do an entire chapter based on selections. Um, well, it'll be selections and masking, I believe. Um, but we'll go through all the details of each one. There's a time and place to use each one of those selection tools. And so you just need to know that that's where you go. Those are the three tools. You can experiment with them for now, um, but you should know if you want to select something, like you have a picture and you want to select the tree that's in the picture so you can delete the background, you would use a selection tool. Your paintbrush, I think, is pretty obvious. It allows you to paint, but what's cool about it is you can change the size of the brush or the texture of the brush, the color you apply, how the color is applied, um, whether it has a soft edge or a hard edge. There's, there's so many things you can do with your paintbrush. And so you could choose the paintbrush and you could hand paint things on your canvas. And just like you can change the size and the softness, it's called the hardness or the softness around the edge of the brush, um, and different things like that, any setting except for color that you can choose for a paintbrush, you can choose for your eraser. And so if you wanted to erase the background of something, but you wanted it to have a nice soft edge, you could increase the softness of the brush. Or if you wanted to um, just erase a very, very tiny area, you could make the brush tip on your eraser really, really small, just like you could make the brush tip on a paintbrush really, really small. The type tool I included on here because it's one of those tools that you probably want to use, you probably want to add type to your design here and there. We don't cover type until chapter 19, but you are free to experiment with this. And there's two ways to apply type. If you click on the type tool and you just click, you're going to get one line of text that just keeps going. And if you use the type tool and you click and drag, you're going to get basically a text box. And it's called paragraph type and it would wrap into a paragraph that fills that box. Uh, with that being said, most of the projects that you're going to want to do without type. Um, but if you want to experiment with some type before it's required, by all means, give that a shot. And then last but not least, you have two main color options in Photoshop. The left color is the foreground color and the right color is the background color. And there are different tools that when you use them will default to using the foreground and the background. I'm not too worried about you memorizing that right now. But if you double click these, and this is something I do want you to know, if you double click either one of these colors, you can launch a picker and you can pick the colors you want. You can kind of use these as like a storage area for your colors. And so maybe you're using yellow a lot, so you put it in the foreground, but you also want to use green. You can put it in the background color. And then when you want to use the green, you can hit these little arrow here and it will switch your foreground and your background color. And I think I'll demo that before we end this, this next video. And so let's say that I wanted to do something in Photoshop that required a color. So maybe I use my selection tool and I want to fill this box with a color. Um, I can do it in a number of ways. You can do edit fill uh, and say I want to fill it with a color. And then this is the color picker and I can choose that color. But what I could also do is I could set my colors over here on the tools panel by double clicking on them and choosing a color. So by default right now, the foreground color is like a dirty brown gray color. If I wanted it to be yellow, I could find the right shade of yellow and select OK. And I could do that also for the background color. And maybe the background is going to be a greeny yellow color like that one. Now they're kind of stored there, so if I wanted to use them in the future, I could. And one example would be to fill this box. Maybe I'm trying to make, I'm going to follow some good practices here by putting this on its own layer, even though we haven't really learned about that yet. Um, what I can do is I can do edit fill, which is just one option for filling this box. And now instead of choosing color, I could say I want to fill it with the background color, and it would fill it with the green color. Or I could choose edit fill, and I could fill it with the foreground color. You could paint, like we were just talking about the paintbrush. And so if I make a smaller brush here, I could, let's make another new layer. I could come back and I could say I want to paint with the green so I can put it as a foreground color. And I can paint behind this box. The settings on my paintbrush are that it's applying the color, but it is transparent and it has a soft edge. If I was to change those settings, which we will learn about when we learn about painting and brushes, um, I could come up here and I could say I want a harder edge or I want a softer edge. 
the opacity on the options bar is set to 33. If I increase it to 77, watch what happens. Now, as I'm applying this buffer to the outside, maybe I'm trying to make it look like it glows, I can paint the, the green on the outside and I get a different look or feel. The same idea applies with the eraser since I'm here. I'll, I'll talk about that too. If you grab the eraser tool, you can make those same adjustments. I could say the opacity of my eraser is only 45%. So now if I, let me make the brush bigger so you can see it, see how big the brush is. Now if I try to erase on layer two, which is the green layer, eh, let's do layer one so you can see the opacity. If I try to erase on layer one, which is the yellow layer, and I try to erase, notice how in one pass it didn't erase because my opacity was 45%. If I undo and I make the opacity 100% and I erase, all of the yellow will disappear. I get that soft edge at the bottom because the, the brush, whoops, the brush setting is set to a hardness of zero. If I was to increase the hardness to 100%, I'll get a straight line. See, straight across. Well, it's straight in the sense that it's the circle that I'm painting with that's making it but I'm getting a hard edge to where I'm painting. 